Hi, welcome to ESI 521 Pattern Generation at the Nanoscale. I'm Professor Uk Jun Nam at the Pennsylvania State University. So, uh, we will continue to talk about uh, block of polymer therapy. So, this is the uh, part two of block of polymer therapy. So uh, today we're going to talk about more about the uh, uh, block polymer lithotherapy uh, process. So in the previous lecture, uh, we talked about what is the way uh, we actually uh, removing one, actually uh, do the phase separation. and then uh, remove one material selectively. And then we also talked about uh, the role of the random copolymer. So when we use a random copolymer, very thin random copolymer on top of the um, substrate, uh, we can have much more efficient phase separation on that dive-local polymer because it just uh, simply erase the preference of the surface energy of the substrate we are using. But as we discussed in the previous lecture, the biggest problem we have after we achieve this kind of uh, um, patterns is the optimum thickness of the um, pattern is only around 40 nanometers and then comparing with compared with uh, other kind of a technology like an EV lithotherapy or nano imprinting lithotherapy this uh, thickness of the resist is kind of a too thin because other technologies offers thicker than 100 nanometer. So uh, what we can do uh, to increase or to increase the aspect ratio of this kind of a resist is something like this. So when we have uh, this kind of high aspect ratio of the nano patterns, if then uh, when we for example, the, if the following process is a dry etching process, if then the etch selectivity between these materials and these materials we want to etch is based on how fast these materials are etched uh, versus the etch rate of this kind of a substrate. So in most of the cases, this kind of organic Material is actually is kind of faster than inorganic uh, material. So in the case of that, we want to have a much high aspect ratio of um, masking material unless we have a um, hard mask, which is uh, made of the uh, inorganic material as well. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, examples uh, people use to improve uh, those kind of, uh, to achieve those kind of a high aspect ratio of the pattern. So uh, this example use tri-layer. So it uses an uh, nitride, copolymer, nitride, and then polyimide. And then uh, for this, for the uh, initial process, it just has an, uh, some kind of a ratio between polystyrene and then uh, polyimide. So uh, after the phase separation, uh, this block of polymer will give this kind of uh, uh, spear structures. And interestingly, polyimide uh, is destroyed upon it is exposed to the um, uh, ozone. So uh, this ozone can destroy the wrinkle of the polyimide. So after this uh, ozone uh, exposure, we can just uh, uh, 
selectively remove this poly emit. And then if we just uh, etch the polystyrene using the uh, CF4 plasma, this poly emit A uh, positioned area is already an uh, uh, empty space, so we have this kind of uh, uh, height differences. So as we just further etch away the polystyrene, uh, at some point, this spot where the polyimid was located just to expose the substrate much faster. And at this point, we just change it. There is another layer of the polyimid. And then at this point, we just change the uh, plasma to the oxygen plasma. And then we just uh, etch it further. In this case of that, we use the polystyrene as an etch mask. And then we can just etch it further. And then just to achieve this kind of a high aspect ratio pattern. So it depends on what kind of materials you want to uh, etch. You can use this material, these structures directly as a mask. But depends on the material, you may want to use a hard mask. So in this case of that, it deposited, this paper deposited a metal layer. And then during the following top process, removed all these structures. So finally achieve this kind of a, a hard mask structures. So if we do a, a substrate etching using this kind of a hard mask, we can also have an, a pretty good uh, etch selectivities. So uh, for the purpose for this specific example uh, to get this high aspect ratio is to do the to perform a successful lift up process. One interesting thing is an, um, in the traditional way, what we needed to do is an to remove this PMMA side, what we uh, did was uh, we do the UV exposure with a very short uh, wavelength of the uh, UV uh, irradiation. So those kind of uh, high energetic photons can uh, destroy the uh, cross link of the PMMA. But this traditional way uh, have uh, UV irradiation and then acid lens to remove that uh, broken PMMA area. We need this kind of wet chemical processes. So uh, UV also is kind of a very uh, potentially very hazard and then uh, people doesn't like this kind of wet chemical processes. So uh, there are another kind of a, a potential way uh, people can, this is, this is an alternative way to remove the uh, PMMA selectively. So in this case of that, um, this area is kind of a PMMA and this area is on polystyrene. So uh, what we can do is uh, we can mix ruthenium with the uh, uh, sodium chloride solution. If then uh, those kind of a solution at the room temperature just to uh, generate uh, ruthenium oxide vapor. So uh, after we do the paste separation. What you can do is uh, in a closed jar, we can just uh, load that these samples. So this side is facing this way. And then we put this kind of mixed 
solution uh, bios in the center and then just close that uh, lid so this kind of a glass jar is kind of a uh, closed environment if then this kind of a ruthenium oxide vapor is kind of a magically only coat the surface of the polystyrene and then this ruthenium oxide is an uh, inorganic material so uh, if we just do the direct dry etching using the oxygen plasma since this ruthenium oxide uh, works as a hard mask so we can just selectively remove PMMA area without doing the UV exposure and without using those kind of acetic acid rinse. So uh, this ruthenium oxide vapor coating is kind of much more uh, straightforward way and then it is much easier way uh, to achieve this kind of a final uh, empty space. In this case of that, we have an, another kind of a polymer layer, which is an uh, LOR2A. This LOR means lift up resist. So uh, we use this uh, lift up resist as a spatial layer. So uh, still, we do have a ruthenium oxide present. Ruthenium oxide coating is present on top of the polystyrene. So using those kind of ruthenium oxide coated polystyrene as a uh, mask, we can just further etch the lift up resist located under the PMMA and eventually we can achieve this kind of a high aspect ratio of nano patterns. In this specific example, we want to etch amorphous silicon, which is an, uh, doped by the um, p-type element. So in this case of that, uh, this structures of the uh, combination of the lift up resist and then uh, polystyrene does not uh, give the high edge selectivities um, it does not uh, tolerate until we get this height of the um, amorphous silicon nanowire so that is why in this specific example like the previous example uh, deposit uh, chromium or nickel hard mask and then do the lift up pro during the lift up process removed all these structures and then remaining all these kind of a green areas only and then uh, during the following process just to changing the plasma uh, we can just etch to the uh, amorphous silicon layer and then just to uh, achieve this kind of a highly ordered amorphous silicon columnar structure. Uh, one question is uh, why lift up resist for this space layer? Uh, as you may remember, actually, as we discussed about this at the optical therapy part in Unit 1, the characteristic of the uh, lift up resist is what? It should be uh, thermally stable and then it also chemically stable as you may remember because this kind of a lift up resist there will be an always another layer coding uh, which is an um, work as an imaging layer so for the optical lithotherapy, on top of the lift up resist, we always coat a photosensitive uh, resist layer. So upon we expose that resist layer, uh, we can just transfer the patterns to that imaging resist layer. 
And then for the E-beam register, we also use this kind of a uh, lift-up register. And then uh, we, I showed you the example of the uh, lift-up register uh, with the PMMA. And in this case of that, PMMA worked as, as an uh, imaging register layer. So uh, this lift-up register always need another layer coding after it is coded. So uh, if it is not uh, thermally stable, while people are annealing, uh, while people are soft baking those kind of uh, imaging register layer, it has a potential to react with those kind of uh, imaging register, which people does not want to have. So that is why it is it should be thermally stable. And when we apply those kind of uh, imaging register on top of this kind of uh, uh, lift up register. We apply those kind of register as a liquid form, so which is uh, mixed with a uh, lots of um, lots of volume of the solvent. So if this lift up register react with those kind of a solvent in the imaging la uh, register layer, if then um, it can also um, messed up and it cannot have a nice and good um, to a register layer. So uh, it should not react with those kind of solvent. So in another word, this register layer should be uh, stable in the chemical reaction. So since uh, this register layer has that kind of one advantages, so when we coat this uh, block of polymer layer as we discussed, after we spin coat, the case is the same like the Im imaging register. We uh, apply this uh, polymer, which is kind of dissolved in either toluene or chlorobenzene. So this lift up register should not react with toluene or chlorobenzene. So it should uh, be stable, and it is. And then after we spin coat this uh, block of polymer, we wanted to anneal this uh, block of polymer about 175 Celsius degree for the phase separation or self-organization. In the case of that, we also do not want this lift-up register react with uh, this block of polymer, but it is not. So that is why uh, people used normally use this kind of lift-up register as an, a spacer layer. In the previous example, these people use the polyimide, and polyimide is also known as um, thermally stable and then chemically stable as well. So that's the one of the reasons why, in this example, people use polyimide as an, a spacer layer to achieve this kind of a high aspect ratio of the Nano pattern. So, uh, using this kind of uh, process uh, flow, this kind of uh, experimental design, uh, we achieved this kind of uh, very highly ordered uh, columns of the amorphous silicon columns, and then this is the uh, actual uh, example of that experiment. So, uh, this a little bit brighter top area is the nickel hard mask. So nickel hard mask are still present a little bit. And then uh, this diameter, actually for this one, the molecular weight of the block of polymer is a um, high molecular weight. So as you saw from the lecture, in the, in the previous lecture, those kind of uh, high molecular weight of this block of polymer has a little bit uh, wider size distribution of the column diameter. So that is why you see the column diameter for some um, for silicon column is kind of much bigger than the other. And that's because of um, we used a uh, little bit high molecular weight of the polystyrene and uh, PMMA dibloco polymer 
But if we just change it back to that uh, smaller molecular weight, like a 77K, if then uh, this diameter of the uh, nano column should be much smaller, and then uh, the size distribution will be also very smaller. So in this case of that, the column height is roughly about 140 nanometer, and then the average column diameter is on about 35. And then uh, from center to center, spacing is about 65 nanometer. Another way is an, um, people just simply uh, coat a much thick uh, block of polymer layer. And then uh, people have a conductive layer up and down, and then apply a high electric field. So this kind of electric field just to uh, make uh, these two materials aligned uh, more uniformly, even though the thickness of this material is kind of a much thicker than its optimum thickness. So this is the one of the uh, example people demonstrated, and the purpose of this is also to achieve those kind of high aspect ratio of uh, nanostructures. But in this kind of an uh, example, it always need a very conductive layer on top of your substrate. So uh, your fabrication process flow should meet with this kind of a configuration since this conductive layer coding on top of your substrate is mandatory. So if you cannot put this conductive materials on top of your substrate, if then you cannot use uh, this kind of an ideas for your uh, actual application. But in this case, people want to grow nanowire using the electroplating during the following process. So this is a perfect uh, case. So for the people also can use this kind of a conductive layer, which is the gold layer as a following um, electro uh, plating struct processes. So people can just grow those kind of nanowires. Another way is an, uh, people can uh, just to put this kind of a phase separated uh, seed layer intentionally. So uh, this is uh, just a proof of concept. So that is why people used um, EBM therapy to achieve this kind of a seed layer. But when people have uh, this kind of a well-aligned seed layer and uh, put the, this kind of local polymer uh, layer, if then, um, even though the thickness of the uh, layer is kind of a little bit thicker, but this kind of a phase separation uh, can follow uh, based on this kind of a seed layer. This is a similar idea we are using the random copolymer but uh, the, the expectation, uh, what we expect is kind of a totally opposite. So in this case of that, we wanted to have this kind of a seed layer, the patterns on the seed layer just transferred to the block of polymer. But uh, in the, when we use the random copolymer, we want to erase all this kind of uh, memory on the uh, substrate. So in opposite way, uh, we can uh, have this kind of a very highly ordered lamellae structure. So uh, using this way, uh, people can achieve uh, this kind of a, a very high ordered uh, block of polymer layer as well. Another very interesting idea is this. Uh, when we just have a one-to-one -one ratio of block of polymer, what we have on is an, uh, this kind of random oriented lamellae structure, right? 
But when we confine this kind of a, a block of polymer, if then in this kind of a confined area, we can have this kind of a very highly ordered nanostructure. And that's very interesting idea because let's say you only have a, a, just a contact lithography tool. Which is a relatively uh, cheaper uh, optical lithography tool, but its highest, highest resolution is roughly around one micrometer. But if you have uh, this cheap version of the uh, optical lithography tool, and then but if you need to achieve this kind of uh, about 20 nanometer spacing of the nano. Uh, line patterns you can still achieve that so what you can do is uh, using this kind of a contact aligner you just achieve this kind of one about one micrometer thick uh, uh, trench structures like this and on that structures after putting this kind of a random core polymer if you just uh, coat uh, block of polymer, if then, because of this kind of a geometrical confinement, instead of this kind of a random laminate structures, you can have this kind of very highly ordered uh, line patterns, which is a very small dimension. And then as you uh, already know, this kind of uh, uh, spacing and then design is kind of, a, we already designed, uh, engineered the materials. So those kind of control is kind of pretty precise. And this example, uh, we should have a one-to-one -one ratio of the block of, dye block of polymer. So using this idea, once we have on uh, this kind of a guide, we can have this kind of a highly ordered line patterns. And in terms of the uh, manufacturability, this way is kind of a much uh, suitable for the high throughput production than uh, this way, because it needs an all kind of an, uh, very advanced therapy technologies to form this kind of a seed layer. So using this kind of a cheap version of the contact aligner, optical lithography technology, combined with this kind of a block of polymer lithography, we can achieve this kind of a very highly ordered line pattern as well. Uh, we only talked about dye block of polymer, which is an, uh, in polymer there is a uh, two sections. Uh, made of material A and material B. Why not tri-block of polymer? Tri-block of polymer, as it implies from the name, it is made of three materials like this. But, but the basic idea is the same. The polymer is on just one single string structures, but made of three material. If we uh, use this kind of a tri-block of polymer as you can see from the cartoons below we can have much more uh, different kind of uh, structures uh, available so this is the structures we can achieve from the uh, di-block of polymer and this one is on another one we can achieve from the di-block of polymer the this green should be uh, blue and this one is a similar one we can achieve from the dye block of polymer but this middle green should be blue so the idea is kind of a very fancy because we can achieve much more complex uh, structures with that uh, simple structure but the thing is and uh, it is much more difficult to control all this kind of phase separation 
So it's kind of much harder to achieve this kind of well paced separated structures which we can now achieve uh, from the dive local polymer. So uh, for this local polymer therapy, we talked about the optimal layer thickness is only about 40 nanometer. And today we talked about how we can achieve those kind of a high aspect ratio of nano patterns. So when we have this kind of high aspect ratio of the nano pattern, we can either use this one directly for the dry etching, and we can also use these patterns for the lift up process. So those kind of approaches using uh, this kind of multiple layers. And then uh, one good interesting idea to achieving uh, this kind of a highly ordered laminate structures uh, with those kind of a cheap optical therapy is on another kind of a very interesting uh, approaches available. So uh, this is the um, and for the block of polymer therapy, but we will uh, continue to talk about uh, Unit 4, uh, the advanced therapy using molecular cell assembly technique. So from uh, next lecture, uh, we're gonna talk about nanosphere therapy, which is another kind of an, uh, therapy technique uh, using the molecular cell assembly. So, uh, we will talk about that on uh, nanosphere therapy from next lecture. Then see you next time. Thank you.